Welcome to Vention Tips. Today, we'll cover how to program a rotary actuator using machine logic and show you how to simulate a machine logic application within Machine Builder. This video will be composed of two main sections, configuring and programming. To get started, we'll need to bring in a rotary actuator, which can be found under the rotary motion category in the parts library on the left. If you have any questions about use cases or how to design using a rotary actuator, feel free to refer to the technical document or leave a question on the user form linked in the description below. In our case, we'll jump ahead to a basic design. If you'd like to follow along, you can click the link to the design also found in the description below. Similar to all other machine logic applications, a machine motion controller is required in order to gain access to the machine logic editor. You can find this in the controls and motor section of the parts library. Once this has been added to your design, we can get started. But don't forget, we'll need to add an eStop module too. Step one, configure your actuator. With your design completed, navigate to the machine logic tab at the top of your screen to open the machine logic editor. From here, begin by clicking add actuator at the bottom left corner of your screen. You will then be prompted to select the actuator you would like to configure from the drop-down menu. In our case, this will be the rotary actuator. Next, give the actuator a descriptive name. If all parts are connected properly in Machine Builder, the configurator will automatically link the motor, homing and end stop sensors, as well as any brake installed. Hovering over each of these sections of the configuration page will highlight the corresponding part in the design space. This model of the rotary actuator has built-in sensor mounts, which allows you to easily attach homing sensors without the need for additional hardware. We'll be using these in our program, so they've already been included in the design. Now, we're ready to program. Step two, programming. When under the Visual Sequence tab, create a new application from the Add App icon and give your application a descriptive name. This is found under the Variables section. Next, we'll move over to the main sequence and click the Add Command icon and select Add Motion. As we only have one actuator in our design, it automatically fills in the field with the configured rotary actuator. Since our actuator has a homing sensor, it's best practice to begin with a Move to Home command. Select this from the drop-down menu first and we'll add another motion command underneath. Rotary actuators can be controlled using any motion command we've seen in previous tutorials, the major difference being that we input an angular variable for position, speed, or acceleration as opposed to a linear one. Additionally, the rotary actuator has two unique commands, these being move to closest angle and set angle. Set angle will read the actuator's current angular position and record it as its new zero position. As we have yet to move the top gantry, we can leave this command out. For this command, We'll set it as move to closest angle and have the gantry rotate to a position of 135 degrees. We have several options for how the actuator can arrive at this position. These are to take the shortest path from its current orientation, to rotate in the positive direction, or to rotate in the negative direction. For more details on how the command works, you can click on the help icon just above the motion drop down menu. In our case, we'll select the one that will take the shortest path. Once complete, let's press play to simulate. That wraps up our session on programming a rotary actuator in machine logic. Thanks for watching and happy designing.